Colleagues, welcome back to the office. It's Steve and welcome to the CPE Today podcast. We're going to get started with our podcast presentation here just in a moment. But before we do, I'd like to share some insight on how you can receive credit for watching today's presentation. There are two options. You can either watch live as it's being recorded through Zoom, more on that here in a moment, or you could be watching or listening on demand wherever you happen to receive content. We distribute our show through YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, our website, and many other places. Now, if you happen to be watching on demand on your own schedule, after watching or listening to today's class, head on over to cpetoday.com and locate today's course page. Uh, you can find our course code by looking at the footer of the presentation to see the link presented there. And it will also be mentioned throughout the presentation on multiple occasions. After com purchasing today's class, you'll complete a short five question quiz on what was discussed in today's presentation. And upon passing that, your certificate for your CPE credits will be automatically generated and available for download. In addition to your purchase, you can also download copies of today's presentation, learning materials. You can ask the presenter questions and more. Now, if you happen to be watching live as it's being recorded through Zoom, your attendance will be confirmed through attendance prompts, which will occur every 12 to 20 minutes and approximately four per hour. They'll pop up automatically. And when a prompt comes up, please choose a response to confirm your attendance. It doesn't actually matter what you choose as long as you choose something as your response will confirm your engagement with our presentation. Attendance prompts might not be announced, so please keep an eye out for them. Now, as long as you've com uh, completed at least 75% of the attendance prompts, you will receive full credit for our presentation. Your completion certificate will be delivered to you by email within two business days of the event. You can always visit cpetoday.com if you have any questions or issues with your certificate. After our presentation today, we'd love to know what you think. Uh, there will be a course evaluation that will automatically pop up. It should take you anywhere from one to three minutes to complete, and your feedback will be used to help us produce better content in the future. Now, if you have any questions or comments throughout the presentation, we'd love to know what they are. Please use the chat or the Q&A functionality to let us know what you think, or if you have any questions on the materials that are being presented. Also, please feel free to share your experience, knowledge, and insight with the class. If you have any technical issues, you can also use that functionality to ask for help. You can always find great content at cpetoday.com. We have a variety of self-study and live courses from all topics, accounting, audit, personal development, Excel, QuickBooks, and more, you name it. Check out cpetoday.com. And the CPE Today podcast is made available Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific. And you can always find great content being discussed in that podcast every single week. If you happen to be a new user, listener, viewer of the CPE Today podcast, thank you so much for coming. Welcome. We're ecstatic and happy to have you. How about you get a free credit on us? Use coupon code ONEFREEPODCAST at checkout to get a free credit for today's class. We're going to go ahead and get started with our presentation here in the podcast today. Thank you so much for being here and enjoy our presentation. Well, thank you, Steve, for the introduction. I'm Randy Johnston. It is such a pleasure to have all of you with us today. Uh, this presentation on the PATH product, I can't tell you how pleased I am to have as a guest today, Rob Chandler. I've known Rob a long time, but we're going to talk about the way that a path can help you with advisory services inside your firm. So again, I happen to be uh, in this session talking about advisory services with Rob and why we think advisory services is particularly important to the future of accounting and accounting firms. We're going to talk about the type of information you should gather to start advising your clients. And we're gonna discuss some places where the PATH uh, product by Simplex Financials can fit into your practice. And we'll also see how PATH by Simplex can integrate with QBO uh, to analyze data and uh, other workflow 
management tools that are within the product, as well as the KPI capabilities. Now, we will have a separate episode where we're demonstrating the product and trying to show you those features. Today, we're mainly talking about the strategies in all those areas. So again, I am Randy Johnston out of Hutchinson, Kansas. I've been around the technology uh, profession and accounting profession for uh, you know several decades. I've been the top 25 thought leader since 2011. And uh, recently found out I was on the accounting top uh, accounting today top 100 list. So I do write columns for the CPA Practice Advisor monthly, and I've published six college level books. So you can see more on me at randyjohnston.com. But most important is our expert guest today. I've known Rob Chandler for uh, quite a long time. He's a serial entrepreneur that has had success in prior businesses, uh, founder of Cloud9 uh, Real-Time Computing, and uh, sold that particular practice to Abacus Next. And he uh, really, I think, got tired of sitting on the sidelines, but Rob, I'll let you speak to your you know, for yourself on that. But when he came back to me and said, look, uh, Randy, uh, I've been creating this tool. I think it's unlike any other. And I've said, Rob, what you've created, to the best of my knowledge, is unique. I have not seen anything like that. So, uh, Rob, what would you like our guest today to know about you? Well, um, thank you very much, uh, Randy, uh, for that introduction. And and uh, congratulations on being the top, you know, 100. You're actually the top 10. I looked at the list and saw you're in number 10 space. So, uh, you know, congratulations. Yep. Your knowledge that you bring to the industry is, you know, so valuable. You have helped me over my uh, career. Of, and, you know, I think I met you back in 2007. So, you know, it feels like, you know, forever. But I just want to personally thank you for that. And, you know, again, excited about helping accounting professionals you know, starting an accounting firm back in January of 2000 and then selling that firm, you know, I was kind of in a crossroad when I actually met Randy and sat down with him and showed him what I was doing on the technology side. And he said, Rob, you have some, you know, I think the word unique technology back then was even said, and he said, you're really going to help change accounting professionals when it comes to t technology and moving them to what we know as the cloud. And, you know, you're a great advisor for us and you continue to be. And, you know, I, when I sold the company in 2017, I thought, oh, retirement life is for me. You know, I, I just uh, recently turned 50 and, you know, when it's in your blood, you know, at the end of the day, you're never retired. And I love helping accounting professionals when it comes to technology, but also small businesses. I love, you know, speaking to both of them because there's two different languages that business owners and accounting professionals, you know, speak and it's bridging the gap and it's helping, helping them both out. And, you know, that's what I love. That's kind of where my passion is. So again, thank you, Randy, for having us today. Oh, I'm so pleased. And, you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, isn't it fun when every day when we get up, we're able to be passionate about what we do. And, and you know, let's face it, I, I had projected, Rob, you wouldn't stay retired <laughs> very long. And I just couldn't, I couldn't quite put a number on it, but I knew you'd be back because it's like, oh man, you're, you're such a young guy. I figured you'd create something else. And you are correct. I'm very careful about how I use the English language. I, you know, sometimes I, I don't have the greatest of speech, but I do know the word unique means one of a kind. And I don't use those type of words very often, just like uh, I think in a conversation yesterday, I used the word superb. And I tried to make sure that the person that was listening said, you know how rarely Randy uses the word superb. Well, as it turns out, I think you've actually created a pretty darn superb uh, product here. Now, I'm so anxious to have our listeners uh, learn about that, too. But I think it's important that we really build out the advisory world a little bit, Rob. And I, I want to leverage your expertise on this because according to the AICPA, advisory services are services the practitioner develops findings and conclusions and recommendations for client consideration and decision making. In other words, helping clients grow their business. Now, I'm, I'm going to start with my definition a little bit at the risk of uh, maybe framing the conversation in a different way. But I am quite concern that people understand that advisory services are quite different than client accounting services. And advisory involves far more 
uh, planning and other elements. In fact, usually when I'm talking about advisory services to people that don't know, I consider advisory high and wide, and I consider consulting narrow and deep. And a lot of uh, uh, accounting professionals through the years have done very good consulting services, but reactionary consulting is not proactive advisory. And, you know, I like to think about advisory as being forward looking and client accounting services as being backwards looking. And, you know, that's, you know, if compliance is backward looking, advisory forward looking. So talk to me about what you think advisory is, because obviously you're in the business of helping firms be better advisors. No, definitely. I think what you said there, it's the client accounting services is just, in my opinion, it's the compliance work. It's everything that needs to be done. But that advisory services is the forward thinking. So what does those numbers basically mean? It's simple conversations, you know, asking the client, what what are they looking to accomplish with their business? You know, one of the things I love to, you know, I, when I meet someone, I kind of find out what their, what their profession is. And I run across, you know, many accounting professionals and, you know, we, we've spoken to over 200 uh, businesses this year. And, you know, some of the questions we like to ask them are, are you happy with your, you know, your accountant? And you'd be surprised, Randy, we find that answer to be no. And it's really because, what that business loan owner is looking for is that advisory services. They understand the importance of the compliance, you know, finding out how much money they're making and, you know, making sure they're paying, you know, the, the government agencies, whether it's a, a federal or state tax return, sales tax, payroll and records and all that. But what they really want help in is that advisory services, is that planning that you're talking about is that budgeting and what what's really important going to make that business leap and to uh, help them accomplish their goals yeah you know and there's a lot of difference rob as i see it between a must-have compliance service and a want to have Mm -hmm. because you know people will uh gravitate towards the want to have and so many small business owners uh, don't know exactly who to trust and you know i don't like the uh, overused trusted advisor phrase that's out there because I think it's been abused. But the fact of the matter is that I think the business owners want an independent advisor that has their best interest at mind. And, you know, if you think about the fiduciary responsibility that accountants should have as they're independent, that's a big deal. And uh, I've been sadly watching some of that in decline but I know that there's accountants out there that want to do the things that are right for their business clients and advisory in my mind helps us build the things that are right. And then you are so correct there. It's, it's, you know, you and I have conversation all the time. And what I love about our conversations is the transparency, whether it's the good, the bad, you know, or the ugly. And that, I think that's important for, for business owners to, under understand that to understand mm-hmm. what changes they need to make what are the things that they need to improve in what are the things that are not working maybe they need to eliminate a product or service those are types of things that are going to be revealed you know when you get down into of advisory services mm-hmm. you know and uh, this thinking that uh, you know grow the business now i realize that uh, you know, growth and size has a lot of attraction to many, but, you know, I just think about the uh, profit first approach, you know, where those guys have basically been saying, look, you can, and this is a phrase that you, my partner said, and you know, my, my partner that I bought out after so many years, Steve used to say, mm-hmm. you know, you can be bigger, profitable, choose one. Yep. And, you know, being bigger isn't necessarily better. Being more profitable and maybe being of less stress is better. So you're right. When you have a conversation with a client, what is it you want to have? What, what's important to you? And you might find that it's time with a family or, you know, excellent clients. So you, you can't tell until you ask the question. And motivators are different for different business owners. And yeah, no, we're going to talk about that a little bit today. And Um, You know, it's one of those things is when you do ask those questions to listen and take Mm -hmm. notes, because I think a lot of times we might assume what that business owner is going to, you know, answer and we shouldn't, 
we should basically ask that question and ask an open-ended question, not a yes or no, because an open-ended question is going to create a lot of dialogue. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, Rob, it's probably time for our first uh, question. And uh, the question is quite straightforward. Which of the following is an advisory service? Now, remember, you need to respond to at least uh, three of the four questions during our time together today. You don't have to get the right answer, but I want to see what you know at this point. And, uh, you know, the responses are planning, cash flow forecasting, management reporting, or all of the above statements are true. So what do you think here? And Rob, you've been around this. So, you know, uh, what do you think of these three responses? You can just comment on those if you don't mind. I, like I said, I, planning is, is a planning. So that's going to be forward thinking. Cash flow forecasting is going to be looking into the future of what, what your cash is and then the, the aspect. Management reporting, you know, that can be, you know, past or, you know, present. Um, from that aspect. But I think all three of those are very important keys to business success. And so you definitely want to be making sure you're sitting down with your client and discussing all these three um, items. Yeah. And as it turns out, uh, you know, dashboards, which you're going to talk to us a little bit about, I hope today, you know, and key, key performance indicators. Uh, I think the best key KPI guy in the world that I've met is Bernie Smith out of the UK. And he's written a book about the 50 uh key performance indicators, a checklist. And then he's done one on, uh, he called gamed this year about how people try to beat the system. But the net here is Bernie's the guy that got me to think about any dashboard element that we have is already backwards looking. He said, the only one that's forward looking is a forecast. And see, I used to talk about dashboards as being real time. And he said, Randy, think about that. If, if it's, on the dashboard, isn't it already in the past, even if it was just a second ago? And it's like, well, that's really interesting thinking, Barney. But in any case, so I really believe that all of the above statements are true. I think planning can be an advisory service. I think cash flow forecasting can be one. And management reporting, as you said, that's the dicier of the answers. It could be forward or backwards looking, certainly. Well, let's take a look then, if we could, at um, you know some of the other things, because I know for you, uh, you're a goal-oriented guy. I think you've been goal-oriented since I've met you. And, you know, you like to start with long-term goals. You know, the, the old uh, begin with the end in mind approach is one of your uh, mantras, I suspect. But mm -hmm. talk to us about when we're doing advisory work, why long-term, short-term goals make a difference. Yeah, no, it definitely makes a big difference. And, you know, it all starts with, the question to the client. You know, one of the questions I like to ask is, you know, what does success look like for you? Again, that's a very open-ended question. And so again, ask the question, have a pen and, uh, pen and paper, um, you know, with you and put your head down and just to start to take notes. You know, another good question I love to always ask when you're talking about these goals is, what keeps you up at night? You know, I think a lot of times, you know, business owners, a lot of things keep them up at night. And, you know, just asking that question, again, you're going to find out a lot about them. Where is their mindset sitting? Is it in the business? Is it in their family? Is it in their personal life? Um, you know, and then once you start to get what that, you know, success looks like, you know, you can kind of, put that and shoot the target to see where they're at and start working the way back and breaking out those goals into short-term short-term goals. I remember in 2015, 16, you know, I went, sat down with my board of directors and I just started discussing with them on an exit strategy. Well, guess what? We were not there yet as a company. And so what I like Randy said, I'm very goal oriented. So I started setting a lot of goals. And then within about 18 month period, I was able to reach that long term goal. So if I didn't have those short term goals, I wouldn't have been able to accomplish that as that success. And so I think that's where you want to basically want to start. You know, another good question is if you could change one thing, what would it be? I mean, just think about that. If you had that conversation with your client, 
on a monthly basis or quarterly basis, just think that the success that the business would have, you know, and, and really getting down those objectives um, is very, very important because once you get all these, all these items down, then you can start to determine the metrics that you need to track the goals because at the end of the day, what is our, what is the ultimate uh, goal? What's the ultimate win is to fire that arrow and then hit it right there in the bullseye. Yep. Makes great sense. And, you know, as you were describing all those uh, items and the methodology that you were getting to Rob, you know, these, this goal setting attribute, it turns out that, you know, we can have practitioners of all ages talk this way, right? Exactly. And see, both, you know, in the old days of advisory, which was frankly, in my mind, probably more consulting or oriented than I should have been thinking about it. I used to think that you had to have a lot of experience to make this all, you know, come to be. But no, I think all you have to do is be able to ask the right questions and find the right resources to get the jobs done. And, you know, on a lot of um, entrepreneurial startups, I ask common questions like, are you building this to run it? Are you building it to flip it? You know, what are, what are you trying to do with the business? And, you know, so the personal goals come into play the business goals come into play. And, you know, sometimes the answer is, well, I'm building it to take it public, right? Mm -hmm. And so, again, those are all pretty lofty sounding things. But, you know, the majority of small businesses in the U.S. are just run to, you know, generate a, a lifestyle for the owner and, uh, you know, a livelihood for all of the team members that are employed. And there's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes that can be very, very good. So, you know, the long-term goals, they go all over the map. And so, you know, I know one of the things that you've built into uh, the PATH system is a pretty interesting goal-setting methodology. Is it appropriate to talk about that here? Or would you prefer to de defer that a little bit? You no, know, we can de definitely talk about that here. But, you know, one of the things I would just want to piggyback on what you said there, Randy, is you don't need to be the subject expert of everything. You know, when a client asks you a question and you don't have that answer, you know, just make sure you get that written down and repeat that back to the client and say, you know what, that's a great question. Let me do some research. I mean, uh, you know, K2 and, you know, PATH and uh, there, these different companies out there, we can help you um, do you answer some of those questions your clients might, you know, ask you. So don't be afraid to say, you know what, I don't know, but I, you know what, I have the resources to find out what that answer is. And that's an interesting take on it because, you know, for years I've said, look, if I've got the answer, I'll, I'll provide it to you. But if I don't know, I'm pretty happy to say, I don't know. It's my mm -hmm. opportunity to learn. And sure. it doesn't make me feel bad in the slightest. In fact, if I say, I don't know, it's like, wow, another opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one of the takeaways from our session today should be that when you're uh, an advisor, a true advisor, you absolutely won't know all the answers. That's not what you do. Sure. Uh, you, what, you know, a, a consultant who's narrow and deep, they better have the answers in an area, but that's not where we're trying to be here. We're trying to be a high and wide, understand the needs, and then, you know, find those uh, answers for the client along the way. So true, Randy. Yeah. So, you know, when you're putting in um, the goals inside PATH, how, how, you, how did you come up with the methodology to be able to do that? And what was your thinking? Well, what am I thinking was, is to make sure they're, you know, you know, in front of you. Um, I think that's the main thing. I think a lot of times we get goals down and we, we, we forget, you know, we forget where they're at. We forget, you know, there's so many different places. We might've been in a text. It might've been in a phone call. It might've been in an email or a spreadsheet or a Google doc or whatever. Um, and so what we wanted to do is we wanted to centralize that information. So when you logged in, you know, whether you log in weekly or monthly or quarterly, you're seeing those goals and they're, they're staring at you and saying, did you, were you able to accomplish them? And I think that's the main thing is keeping those goals, you know, in, in front of you because it's a race. It is going to be a long race to start with your short-term goals and run the long-term. You know, you just, if you ever go to a horse track, you know, 
the horse that run usually wins that race has to pace himself, but he has that goal at the end is I got to accomplish, you know, and I got to win this race. So when he comes around the third turn, he's has that energy and he has the tools and he has the, you know, the, the power to basically in the right jockey and he's done all the training to, to finish and finish on top. And I think that's the, the main thing that, you know, when we develop the software, we said one of the things we want to make sure we ask the questions correctly, but we want to record them. And then we want to be able to track them uh, along the way to see how we're actually doing. Yeah. So it is a marathon, not a sprint. And it's really the things you do every day to really try to hit those goals. So one of the things that I know uh, your tool and others should have, and yours does have, are metrics to track the goals. Now, those metrics might be external comparisons, but they might be internal. So what's your advice in that area? So my advice in that area is there's probably about what we call the common 20 different KPIs um, that will kind of go across you know, all types of businesses. And then when you look at the different types of industries, you might have anywhere from seven to 12 different metrics for that actual, you know, industry. So one of my recommendations is, is you being the advisor is to mentor and the advise the client to track uh, a total of three KPIs on a quarterly basis where you being the accountant, you might, you're, you're behind the scenes. So you might want to be tracking those 20 common or maybe those seven to 12 industry ones. But for the business client, start with the top three that's going to really impact that, uh, that business. And if you think about this, if, you if, that bus if you're setting those three goals for, the, for, your, for your client and you're having monthly or quarterly meetings, when you get to the end of the year and they hit 75%, just say they said, hey, we did a C, what, what, how's that going to impact in their business? That means that they're going to achieve nine out of 12 of the KPIs where they're moving their business forward. So if, as, as that business progresses, the metrics might change and therefore you need to constantly um, address, address that. Yeah. So you're a more simplistic approach, which I, by the way, I, I understand completely where you're focusing on three in that quarter. That's so different than let's say the old dashboard methodologies where, you know, if we go get back to classical Harvard dashboards, they basically had four sectors, four or five KPIs, uh, maybe five sectors with four, but a maximum of 20 KPIs. It was almost too much. I know in my own energy, I business, it took us a long time to work out our KPIs, but now that we have them, I can tell you from our, our KPIs, how we're doing, what we're going to be doing over the next 90 days, profitability, people requirements. I mean, I pretty much got it all wired for sound at this point. I don't want to sound like I, <laughs> I you know, I know it all in this because it's taken, you know, darn near 40 years to work out all the KPIs to be so wired for sound. But I think what, as advisors, we can really help our clients get there much quicker. So, you know, that really brings me to a, a bit of a discussion around levels of advisory services. Now, um, you know, my thinking in this, and I'd like for you to tell me what, what would be a better way to think about this, is I believe that there's, you know, three levels of services out there. There's primary advisory services, there's secondary, and there's tertiary. And you can see that for tertiary, I consider those services you don't want to perform. So like a concierge in a hotel, those are clearly referred out. Mm -hmm. Now, primary, I think everybody has to do, and I really put planning, for example, in as a primary service. So you need to pick a few primary services that your firm does. And then on the secondaries, you ought to pick secondary services that you like to do. And frankly, not every firm can do all the secondary services. Now, um, for digital CPA, they asked me to create a list of advisory services that they could use for production. And I said, well, look, uh, here's a list and it's got over 70 
advisory services in it and see so many people are thinking about a few, one, two, three, four. And by the way, if you provide one or two or three or four, that may be enough. And I'll just pick on planning as a primary and secondary might be tax advisory services, for example, or it could be cash flow advisory and so forth. So anyway, I like to break out my services by primary, secondary, and tertiary. So do you have a, a, a methodology that's like that or one that you'd say would be even better than my typical way of doing it? Yeah, I think the main thing is to really spend some time around this. And like Randy said, setting that primary, secondary, um, and that concierge services. I, I think a lot of times accounting firms get overwhelmed because they try to be the jack of all trades and do everything. Um, and I think one thing that you need to really understand is what services are you providing? And then second of all, you, you'd have to address the pricing model on that. I know we're not gonna really go into too much depth there, but um, I, I see a lot of accounting firms giving their time away for free um, because they don't understand the different uh, primary and secondary. So that's one of the things is spend some time with you. If you're the visionary and you're the CEO of the firm, um, you know, spend some time with yourself, bring your staff together. But this is a great exercise. And, and you know, especially going into 2022 uh, and years to come, you definitely want to, um, you, you want to do this and you want to do this on a uh, really a regular basis. I recommend maybe once a year because things can change, but definitely, you know, take a look at what your primary and your secondary are. Yeah. And as it turns out, uh, you know, we have other courses here at CPE today and for my K2 business about how to develop those services, how to price them. So we've got all of those in other courses, as it turns out. But, you know, when I think about these service levels, you'll notice that I, the next question is pretty straightforward which of the following are advisory service levels? And it's pretty much of a shoe in type question. I think at this <laughs> type, there's primary, there's secondary and tertiary. And if I can get you to think about services that way and pick your primary, the core services that you're going to provide, which should include planning, and then think about what secondary services are out there and build out some of those as well, making sure that they're all profitable for your clients and profitable for your firm, and then refer the other things out. Let them become tertiary services. So, you know, tertiary might be something as simple as uh, succession planning, or it might be something as simple as business valuation. But for other firms, succession planning and, and business valuation may be secondary. So, you know, it depends and on your firm what you're going to take. And that's a great opportunity. The third one is to create those partnerships. And so, um, you know, for example, some firms might not offer payroll services and payroll firms come across new businesses all the time that need, you know, advisors and advisory uh, services. And that's a great referral aspect. So think about the third one, too, as creating those great partnerships. Yeah. So I think we've talked about that enough that you've got the idea. Right now, my thinking is that all of the above statements are true. And again, uh, if you want a list of those type of services, they, they are public and I will share them with you along the way. Well, you know, then at this point, um, over the next little while together, Rob, I'd like to talk about why advisory services are important. And there's probably several uh, attributes here. Now, um, I am not one of those guys that says that compliance is going away in the profession. You know, there's a lot of people that are saying that and, and compliance is changing, but I don't think it's necessarily going away. Uh, in fact, uh, I've spoken at conferences here in the very recent past where the amount of tax compliance has actually gone up from about 42% to 51%. So, you know, when you think about it from a revenue perspective, that tells me there's still growth in that. But we do have a lot of technology that are automating some accounting services into extinction. So what do you see happening in, in the uh, automation area? Well, I mean, automation's, you know, happening, you know, every single day. It's changing the world. I mean, I remember, you know, back in, you know, 2000, 
four and five online banking came and now everybody uses online banking. Everybody was scared to move to the cloud and, you know, people started putting their personal lives on, online and then the business came right after, right after that. So, you know, you're, you're looking at where you can download transactions now from your banking to your accounting software and things are being categorized automatically. And then it's just going in there and doing that review. So things that used to take, you know, 10 hours are now taking one hour, you know, and that's why you say, you know, that on the next point, you charge your clients more for less work because you can do that. If you spend some time around the pricing model of your products and services, you can definitely make a lot more money, you know, charging your client on a package of services compared to charging them on an hourly rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for some time, I've been a promoted prom a proponent of flat rate service charges. And, you know, we applied those in the client accounting services world. And it turns out you can do that in the advisory service world very, very cleanly. And when you also point out, Rob, the automation. So I know Path, for example, reads in QuickBooks Online transactions automatically. And you illustrated with the bank account uh, information, credit card information that can come in automatically. You know, it, it is part of what I uh, have used as a phrase for quite some time. If an accountant is keen data, you've got a broken process. <laughs> but we are also concerned that your clients may begin to see through, oh, all this automation, uh, you know, uh, you're not really doing much to earn the money if you're doing client accounting services and it's all automated, you know, so that I think the client accounting services is more likely to be commoditized than, let's say, advisory services or tax, as it turns out. So, uh, you know, the thing here is you really have to set your fees to be reasonable for your base. And, uh, you know, I have a methodology where I like to do flat cheap fees charge in advance of delivering the service. But then I also will do engagements over a, a year and then I'll adjust fees appropriately based on uh, value. And, uh, you know, value-based pricing is a big deal. So, you know, what do you think about, uh, you know, the value of helping clients be successful and grow? What, what's that worth? Yeah, and that's exactly what you just said, because, again, if you put that roadmap together for that client, when you sit down with them in the beginning to the end, and you show them where you're, they're at today, and then where they're headed, when you start to make progress along the way, that's going to be your value. And I can guarantee you that as long if you're making progress with that client every single month, and I would explain, it's not going to happen overnight. It's like, you know, going to the dentist, if you need a root canal, it's probably going to be several different <laughs> types of, you know, visits that you're going to have to sit down with the dentist, but that's the same thing. So your main goal is to show that progress and as long as you're showing that progress, that's going to be the value. That's why they're paying you. You know, if you think about, you know, the, the person that comes in and gives you a thousand dollars worth a, a bill for something that needs to be done. And maybe they're fixing something in your home. The, the bolts were $10. It's the $990 that you're paying, that the, that you're paying for because of their knowledge, because they know how to solve the problem at hand. And that's what you want to show your client is that you have the tools, you have the knowledge, you have the expertise, and you're going to show, you're going to take them along this journey to create success for their business. Because at the end of the day, that's what they're trying to create. Either they're, they're creating that success to build a legacy. So they either can pass it on to their family or they can create that wealth and sell that business. One of the two things there. Yeah, understood. And see, I'm still having a little trouble with that root canal thing. All right. Because uh, <laughs> some, some of these processes are pretty painful, but your, they are. your, your comment though, about telling the client, it's not going to be immediate that we're on a journey together. But then when you're back at, at it month after month, advising the client and you can see the progress is being made, that is the value. And, you know, if in fact you're not making progress, one of the things you'll have to do is figure out how to adjust uh, to hit that success. And one key attribute that we know is really 
true with advisory relationships. Now, again, uh, you've been on the profession a long time, so have I, but an old phrase with, um, you know, CPA professionals is that there was a lot of client loyalty. And in fact, there was, it was very rare that uh, CPA firms would market and try to steal clients from other firms. That just was not commonly done. However, we've noticed in the last decade or so that the clients have actually become less loyal uh, because things have become commoditized so much. So commoditized tax returns or commoditized client accounting services. But advisory so far, we have not seen any commoditization really happening here. So in effect, this becomes a relationship instead of a transaction. See, a lot of sales tax and compliance and a lot of client accounting service is transactional. So that actually is far more of an issue as we'd see it, whereas advisory is far more of a loyalty thing. Mm -hmm. No, and I couldn't agree with you more. It goes back to the value that you're, you're, you're talking about, you know, when it comes to, you know, at the end of the month, how much money are there, how much money are the businesses making or losing, you know, and at the end of the year, how much taxes are they paying, you know, personally, and um, on that business side, you know, the, the numbers are the numbers, but really where the business client and creates that, you know, loyalty is them going from point A to point Z and walking them through that success, getting to the end, like, you know, I shared with you, Randy, my, one of my most happiest days was February 17th, 2017. It wasn't because what I accomplished for the Chandler family, it was what I accomplished for the individuals that invested in Rob Chandler. And that's what people want is people want that success. And they, they can, they can understand that, especially you get those goals down and then you, you listen to them. And then at the end of the meeting, you cite those goals back to them, you document it, you set another meeting, you start to put those metrics in place to track the success after month, after month one or quarter one, you've seen the things that you're going to be able to accomplish. That's value. They're not going there. They're not going to be leaving you because they know they take another three to six sessions like this, 18 to 24 months down the road, their business is going to be completely different. Yeah, indeed. And to, to me, it's fascinating as you're talking about the, the planning pieces here, the advisory pieces, and I'm going to put it in the context of tax planning versus tax advisory. And, you know, so many of uh, uh, professionals will do quarterly estimates, but they don't really do a tax plan. They're just doing, you know, estimated payments as opposed to, you know, let's do some strategies where we can protect this uh, income that you're making and how can we optimize that? And, you know, it is clear when you've got tax advisory working right, uh, it is common for CPA professionals to save their clients, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 a year and more. Well, if we do advisory for business growth, right, we can make clients not only tens, but sometimes hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars for the right clients. And how much is that worth? You know, if you can take a client that would have made, I don't know, I'll pick a number that's small, like 50,000 and help them make 100,000 just by teaching them the right things to do, how much was that worth to the client? Well, you could say bluntly 50,000, but it's probably worth more than that. No, you're so true. I remember working with um, with a, a small business and accounting firm in the past and coming in on the advisory services. And that business owner and that accountant was just all interested in the financial reports and, and looking at the financial reports. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Let's put some business insight metrics into the business. And now <clears throat> what that business owner does is he's more interested in the business insight report each month than the financial reports because that's really telling him where he needs to concentrate. It's kind of the scorecard. It's the performance. It's, it's you know, for me, I drive a Tesla, so it's the energy in the car. How much energy do I have? Do I need to charge it? Do I need to charge my car tonight? Or do I have 350 miles I can, you know, drive from, from Temecula to Palm Springs? And so that's what the business owner wants is they want to know those top 
individual items that are going to make their business successful. That makes great sense. Well, you know, let's turn our attention, if we could, just to some of the tools that you visualized needed to be put into path when you were creating it to help people be successful advisors. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to frame this to, to say that, you know, Rob had a vision of what he was going to try to build in his tool, and he was trying to help uh, get some leverage for accounting professionals out there against their clients. And, you know, in my mind, great advisors help businesses of all sizes be more successful. And many times in the past, I've said, you know, small business success is really critical to the whole economy's success. But the fact of the matter is that even if you are an executive of a Fortune 500 company, you can have a relationship with that person about what they want to be. It becomes a personal plan, if you will. So, you know, a lot of firms turn their attention to wealth management and, you know, wealth preservation that way. So whether it's wealth planning from an individual perspective or business planning from a business perspective, it was about what do we want to be? So you put a bunch of stuff in here that I think is very interesting. And, uh, you know, over the next, uh, uh, 10 minutes or so, what I'd like to do is just see if we can get few, through a few of these. Again, I remind our uh, listeners today that we will have another session where these features will be demonstrated. But right now, I'm trying to get the philosophy behind them and why. So I'll talk a little bit about the philosophy. The philosophy came into um, me, myself, running a business, <clears throat> and it's actually cloud nine. And so it was one of those situations when I was running my business, there was information in so many different places and it was critical information. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to streamline where I could turn to, to see how my business was doing, see, keeping track of those important <clears throat> items that needed to be completed. And so really it came from, you know, path came from that need, want, or desire that businesses need for success to take place. But also one of the main components is a tool that the accounting professionals can utilize to collaborate with that business owner to making sure that everything's tracked and communicated in one place. Mm -hmm. So I know there's only <laughs> about three products in the market that I routinely suggest for industry comparisons, but you wanted that inside your uh, platform. Can you talk about that for a minute? Yeah, it's, it's one of the, when you're sitting down with the client, you know, questions come up, how am I doing versus, you know, the, um, you know, the industry and it's a good place to start. It's called, you know, the benchmarking aspect. So one of the things that we have inside our product is about 15, 18 calculations. That's around indus industry comparison. You can kind of go down those because that will give you an avenue of where you maybe need to start around a conversation of setting um, those goals and objectives. Yeah, it makes great sense. So <clears throat> what the heck is Data Mash? So Data Mash is a very um, powerful, um, I call it the engine. And what I mean by that is Data Mash is going to allow you to do that unique calculation to track the KPI for the business. So if you think about it, maybe you wanted to know, you know, what your sales um, per square footage um, for your, your restaurant or for your business. Um, the only way that you'd be able to do that calculation is run a financial report, get out your calculator, and maybe you export that to Excel and then do that calculation. So one of the things that you can set is you can set these calculations in place and then they're just automatically updated as information comes into the accounting software. So we pull information from QuickBooks. We can also set um, you know, the square footage for the business. So if the square footage for the restaurant is 2750, that can be a part of the calculation. And then another part of the calculation can be, maybe I wanna compare it to the industry standard. So that's another portion of the calculation. So I can build any type of calculation I want, memorize it and put that into my data calculation library. 
for future yeah. use for future use. So you can understand why Rob called that data mash because you know a calculation engine that can do anything you want, including all the different things that you might look at in the business, then put it in here so it calculates automatically. That was too long of a name. But data mesh, <laughs> I think, works, you know. Now, another thing that I appreciate inside PATH is the timeline. So what, what are we trying to accomplish on the timeline? So the timeline is, you know, you think about the timeline is if you use social media today, it, you probably log on to Facebook or LinkedIn and you start scrolling because you want to see what's taking place with your friends or in the business world. Well, guess what? Now you have that same type of feature built in the path. You can start scrolling and see what's taking place with sales, marketing, operations. And then you can also share information. So maybe one of these data mesh calculations can be shared. And you, as you're looking at all maybe 12 conversations that took place and you go, you know what? I don't have time right now, but I just wanted a quick overview. I want to be able to, I want to bookmark two of these things that really caught my attention because when I get back to my office or when I, you know, get out of this meeting or whatever it might be, I want to, you know, go and look at those two important items. So, you, you know, one of the things you think about that, that's, that's power. Every time I went to hire a new executive, um, it was one of those things where they became like the lost puppy dog in the business. Um, and what I mean by that is they would have to follow me around to learn everything that's taken place in the business decisions that I made. But now they can see the timeline, they can scroll, they can re read what's taken place in the company in the last three to six months. And again, it's not, it's a, it's a, it's great information because now I have the history of what took place. Personally, you know, I capture highlights on my Facebook account of all my big events. But between you and me, Randy, I don't know what, I don't know where I was 18 months ago. But again, with the timeline, you're going to be able to know where you are 18 months ago. Yeah. And you know, a related feature to that is the milestones. I mean, I think when you first showed this to me, Rob, this is one that really got my attention just because, well, I'm a bit of a historian to start with, but I actually like to know when we did this or when we did that. So can you explain the milestones? Yeah. So milestones we're capturing um, th kind of, th we're capturing and we're planning um, and we're rec recording either the, the good, um, the bad, or the neutral in the, in the business. So if you think about, we just went through, you know, the last 18 months, we, we went through a pandemic, right? And so that was a major event that took place in the company. And there was a lot of things that needed to be decided, you know, when the business would shut down or any protocols that would change. I mean, that continues to cha change. What's nice about that is I have now I've now benchmarked that on my milestones. I mean, you probably ask this question all the time. Every time you go and set up a new bank account or a credit card, what date did the business you know open? And you're probably pulling a you know 1120 or 1120s to find out because that's a place where the 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 start date is, or maybe you're referring to the corporation documents. That's a big date. That's when your baby was born. Let's let's basically post that in the milestones. So anything that's historical, that's impacting the business, either the good, the bad, or neutral, I want to capture it. So maybe again, it's going out and hiring a vice president of marketing. I want to book, I want to, I want to track that and I want to bookmark that because then I can say, I can then take a look at from that date to, to future of what, how our sales increased from the date that we've hired that marketing manager. So it's just a powerful tool where I can journalize and I know where those historical events took place in my business were. Makes great sense. And so bookmarks, I think, may be somewhat related to the milestones in the timeline. And yes, and bookmarks can be de designed and customized um, based upon what you want, how you want to design the system. So maybe you want to create a bookmark such as financial reports or such as tax returns. So when you go to share that information with the client, you bookmark that, they can click on the financial reports and see all their financial reports right underneath that bookmark. Maybe you want to create um, a customized financial dashboard to see, you know, how that business is performing. Maybe it's days, 
cash on hand, the distributions that they've taken for the year and their net income from the business. So they can create, you can have a financial dashboard that you create as a bookmark. So it's all customized on, on that information. Think about it as your internet browser favorites that you can turn to and find information within seconds. Yeah, it makes great sense. And so, you know, if we're going to hit those goals, we're probably going to make a list of things to do. So what's that to-do list about? So the to-do list is just like what you said. And so this creates the transparency in the company. So if you're working with an account, with a client, you can set those goals. You can set those due dates of when things need to be accomplished. And it's not a phone call. Oh, when do I need to complete this? Or when do I need to complete that? You have transparency. You have the ability to see who uh, to see whose um, items have been assigned to. You can set that by uh, due dates. You can um, add information to that. And so again, it creates that transparency, and it's going to save you a lot of time. Yeah. So you can see why in a, a separate episode, we want to show you some of these features because you've got the idea now from the head Fred with Rob. He's basically explained why we're looking at things the way we do. So it might be a good time to ask another question. What tools are included in PATH to support your efforts to have a CAS or advisory focus? So bank reconciliation, report templates, milestones, or all of the above are true. And so while you're thinking about your response there, there's certain things that you didn't put in your system, Rob. I, you know, one thing that uh, you and I have talked about, you're not trying to be a financial reporting system or, you know, a, a reporting tool, if you will. You're different. And so some of these things don't make sense in that context. So, yeah, and the reason why we didn't do that, because we want to be forward thinking. We want to be on that planning side. We want to be on that advising side. There's a lot of great solutions out there when it comes to the what I call beautiful re financial reports. Those are great solutions and you want to continue to use them. But one of the important tools is a product like PATH that's going to help you do advisory um, services and do that forward thinking. Yeah. So if you're forward thinking, you're probably not doing a lot of bank reconciliation and you're probably not doing a, well, you do have some report templates, but I don't want to understate that. But the key thing here is the milestones. That's really the answer I was after here, as opposed to all of the above. So in any case, well, you know, in our time together, what we've talked about is some of the advisory services that are out there for professional firms and how a tool like PATH could actually assist you with some of those advisory services offerings. Uh, in future courses, you know, we'll talk about how to configure the KPIs and dashboards and some of the other key features of PATH, as it turns out. So I think we'll have that in a future session. And, you know, Rob, I can't thank you enough for your investment of time with me today. And frankly, the things I've learned from you through the years your expertise and so forth, uh, just greatly appreciated. I know this, this uh, path product that you've created with you and your team can help so many other people. Well, thank you, Randy, for helping us. And again, thank you to, to being, you know, to give the feedback that you've given us. And, you know, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the things I'm proud of is listening to our clients and listening to our advisors. So yeah, it makes great sense. Well, we look forward to having you on another CPE Today podcast. And in the meantime, I would just uh, thank you for being here and look for you in the future. Thank you so much for attending our presentation and podcast for today. As a reminder, you can check out cpetoday.com for all your continuing education needs. We have courses on every topic you can think of from accounting to audit to ethics and regulation and more. Everything you need to know to stay relevant, current, and up to date with the profession. Again, check out cpetoday.com. If you're a new watcher or listener to the CPE Today podcast, again, we offer you a free course and a free credit for you to try our services. Pick the podcast of your choosing and use coupon code one free podcast at checkout to make that purchase free. If you enjoyed our presentation, please consider connecting with us on social media and let us know what you think. You can find us just about everywhere at CPE today, uh, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. And please consider subscribing to us wherever you happen to receive your content. You can find us on Apple podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and others. We'd love for you to leave a review and let us know what you think. It helps new listeners and watchers find our course and content. 
Thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for being in the office, and we look forward to seeing you back here soon. Take care.